In the opulent restaurant where the film opens, a man places a hefty meal order. Once he's finished eating it all, he removes a fly from his hidden ring, dunks it in his hot chocolate, and sets it down on the table. He then summons the staff and gestures toward the table's dead fly. The employees apologize for the event right afterward, but the man starts criticizing them in front of everyone as though he had received subpar service. The manager intervenes out of concern for the reputation of the establishment and permits the man to go without making a purchase. Here, it is revealed that the man's name is Clovis, that he is a skilled scam artist, and that he has never purchased anything, not even a place to live. On another occasion, he visits a posh clothing store with his stepsister Lohane. Clovis gives his sister the go-ahead to enter the dressing area and tuck as many garments as she can beneath her blouse. He then places one of the garments in a patron's luggage. After some time, Lohane emerges from the store and informs the clerk that she would be going because she didn't like any of the garments. However, there is one last issue. The clothes have a tag that warns that if someone exits the building without paying by sounding an alarm. As soon as the customer tries to leave the door, the sirens sound and the storekeeper stops her, seeing this as the ideal moment to use Clovis's suggestion. While the alarm is still going off, Clovis and his sister flee, obtaining free clothing in the process. It's even simpler for Clovis to obtain a free place to stay since, first, he and Lohan choose the greatest hotel in the city with all the amenities one could need. He then walks up to the receptionist and hands her a check, explaining that although he has just deposited the money, it won't be credited until Monday because it is Saturday. Clovis starts ranting about his rights and eventually persuades the receptionist that it will be feasible to provide them a room without first obtaining the money. Despite being wealthy himself, he never has to pay for anything now, but it wasn't always like this. When Clovis was a child, he and his parents resided in a tiny city in Brazil. His hopes of becoming a well-known painter were derailed when his parents divorced. He subsequently moved in with his wealthy mother-in-law and father, but after barely a year, his father got bored and departed. After that, Clovis moved in with his wealthy mother-in-law and her new husband, but after just six months, she became weary and requested a divorce. During his adolescent years, Clovis moved about a lot, and in one of those families, he meets his stepsister Lohan, with whom he gets along great. After 15 years, Clovis left his family behind and is now living by himself in Rio de Janeiro. He still enjoys painting, but now he does it differently, by creating accurate reproductions of well-known works that he sells to a dishonest senator, who then resells them for ten times as much. Due to his involvement in so many illegal transactions, Clovis has become a persuasive speaker who can persuade anyone. He has also developed into a con artist and lies to others at every opportunity. He does, however, adhere to one rule, he only defrauds the wealthy. Clovis meets his friend Tavino in the following scene and tells him that he is about to pull off the biggest scam of his life. He then pulls out some paperwork and says he's planning to sell Rio de Janeiro's famous Christ the Redeemer statue. Tavino laughs at the notion as is to be expected given how difficult it is to sell government property. But when Clovis explains his strategy in great detail, he is compelled to accept it. The proposal states that Clovis will pretend to be a government real estate agent who will then possess all the required authorizations, designs, and site assessments. In addition, Clovis even made a bogus website with all the information about the transaction. The first step is to get in touch with a dishonest businessman who wants to purchase a small piece of history for himself. The last stage is to persuade him that the agreement is legitimate, and this is when Clovis's persuasive abilities come into play. He will add that the government wants to create something more productive and is looking to sell the building. Tavino is immediately shocked to hear all of this, but he offers Clovis his car and sends him his best wishes. The meeting is scheduled at a highly busy beach the next day after Clovis makes contact with a few businessmen. Surprisingly, the men accept the deal and buy into the narrative. With that, a sizable suitcase containing millions of Brazilian reels is given to Clovis. He moves with a dance to Tovino's garage and hands him his portion of the cash. Clovis can't stop dancing even at home, and he sleeps with all the cash strewn across his bed. His joy, however, is short-lived because the following morning, the selling of Christ the Redeemer is all over the news. Even a sketch of him depicting him as a fraudster was prepared by the police. When Clovis is scared, 
He runs to Tavino's garage right away, but instead of asking for assistance, he simply steals a vehicle. But when he goes back to his house to get the money, he discovers that the senator has tracked him down and told the police about it. As Clovis assesses the gravity of the situation, police sirens can be heard in the distance. In addition, all of his money is gone, so, he gathers his last possessions and bolts out the door. He encounters a woman who turns out to be his estranged stepsister Lohan just as he is ready to flee. As Clovis begins to whine that she arrived at the wrong moment since he is having a terrible day, Lohan adds that her day was even worse. The movie then flashes back to two days when Lohan is selling hamburgers out of her trailer. Despite the meager pay, she works hard because she wants to serve the best burgers in town. When Lohan mentions that she doesn't have her company registration documents, two cops sadly arrive and demand them, threatening to remove her trailer if she doesn't. With no other options left, Lohan bribes the officers with her whole monthly savings and sends them away after pleading with them to let her alone. The very following day, however, two different cops approach her and request the paperwork. When Lohan assures them that she has already resolved the matter with their colleagues, the officers admit that they do not have any colleagues. As soon as she hears this, Lohan realizes she has been duped. To make matters worse, the authorities remove her trailer, leaving her destitute and alone. With nowhere to turn, Lohane decides to meet Clovis, the only relative she has. Back in the present, Clovis tells Lohan to get in and leaves the area quickly without giving a reason. Over the next few hours, Lohan tries to talk to Clovis, but he is mute. He ultimately makes a stop in a remote area and admits that the cops are chasing him. Then, after bringing her to a hotel, he creates yet another masterclass to secure their free admission. Later, they use their customary method to go to the poshest store in town and get some clothing for themselves. Following this, Clovis begins hatching a plan to rob a bank. To do this, he uses his binoculars to scan the beach area and discovers a tour agency where a wealthy woman is speaking with a saleswoman. Since checks are the only currency accepted by all the local travel agencies, Clovis sends Lohan to take a picture of the wealthy woman's check so he may fake it. Lohan first objects, saying it's too risky, but after Clovis assures her she will get her trailer back, she consents. In the following scene, Lohan walks inside the shop and has a strange chat with the saleswoman. Lohan poses for a picture while capturing the signature as the wealthy woman produces her check. When the wealthy woman is gone, she then invents an explanation and goes outdoors. Clovis enters the shop while posing as the wealthy woman's assistant. He mentions that his mistress has sent him a new check because the previous one has been rendered obsolete for some reason. The fresh check is a phony from a fictitious bank account. Unexpectedly, the saleswoman falls for the hoax and gives him back the prior check, without asking any questions. After that, Clovis goes to the bank and withdraws the significant amount while claiming to be the account holder's son. Clovis and Lohan decide to celebrate that evening because they have enough money to last them for several months. The same salesgirl that they had fooled that day, however, spots them. Usually, Clovis has a strategy to get out of a sticky situation, but this time he just advises Lohan to run, which she does. The pair eventually makes it to their hotel, gets their luggage, and drives off to another city. The following morning, Lohan and Clovis make a pit stop at a garage, where Clovis fulfills his pledge to buy his sister a car. Although Lohan is dissatisfied that she is receiving a combi rather than a trailer as she had requested, she accepts it, and the two part ways once more. After only a few minutes, with Clovis having taken all the money, Lohan begins to miss her brother and follows him. Infuriated, Clovis steps on the accelerator and tries to leave Lohan behind but ends up wrecking his car's engine when she says she won't let him leave unless he gives her a trailer. He is left with no choice but to ride along in Lohan's combi, and as the sister bro pair cruises across the countryside, they start talking about their youth and have a fantastic time. They even sing a few songs enthusiastically. As a result, Lohan becomes disoriented and collides with an approaching chicken truck. The pair escapes the collision unharmed, but as soon as the cops show up, they are forced to leave without their money. As soon as night falls, the tension between the two becomes intolerable as they begin to argue, each blaming the other for the predicament. As soon as Lohan switches on the radio, a news report announces that the police are looking for two con artists who have defrauded several people throughout the city. As a result, Lohan and Clovis are compelled to remain hungry inside their car. B. 
Being the smartass that he is, Clovis swiftly devises a strategy to leave the city, though. The following morning, they pretend to be transporting a live heart to another city while traveling to the nearby airport dressed as doctors. The airport personnel initially tries to stop them by saying that they need to make reservations first, but when Clovis explains that a VIP transplant needs a heart, he agrees. With this, the two get on the plane and fly to Sao Paulo, another city. When they go to the airport, Lohan leaves Clovis alone while she uses the restroom to freshen up. Unfortunately, several police officers identify him and apprehend him right away. They then leave Lohan behind as they transport him out of the area. The head commissioner Ricardo brings Clovis to the police station where he questions him. Ricardo informs Clovis that he will serve at least 20 years in prison, but Clovis still has a trick up his sleeve. He informs the commissioner that he has extensive knowledge about other criminals and that, given the opportunity, he would accept a plea offer. As soon as Ricardo hears this, he decides to accept the offer because he needs a promotion. With this, Clovis begins disclosing information on the senator and his nefarious money laundering activities. He even offers a strategy to catch the senator in the act. The following day, Ricardo transports Clovis to his makeshift residence so that he can stay there for a week and carry out the strategy. To prevent him from escaping once more, he must wear an ankle band. When Clovis phones Lohan after Ricardo departs, she reveals that she has flourished in Sao Paulo. He urges her to join him in one last theft instead of telling her that he is in arrest using his usual methods. Despite Lohan's skepticism and desire to avoid problems, Clovis eventually wins her over by promising to give her part of the heist's proceeds. The two meet at Clovis's apartment in the evening to discuss the plan. Before they get started, Clovis goes over his entire background, including how he utilized fake paintings and sold them to the senator. He then informs Lohan that to become a broker, she must follow suit. A well-known painting will be faked by Clovis, and when it is finished, Lohan must get in touch with the senator and sell it at a profit. Despite her fear, Lohan agrees since she needs the money badly. With that, the two get to work on their preparations. While Lohan works on her communication abilities, Clovis starts painting a well-known piece. After a few days, the painting is finished, and Clovis even makes contact with the senator's assistant Roberto to arrange the transaction. The phone soon comes in, and Lohan reluctantly answers it. Despite her trepidation, she negotiates skillfully and closes the transaction at $50,000. She meets Roberto the following day at a cemetery and, with the use of a walkie-talkie provided by Clovis, exchanges the artwork for the money. The two go to a bar at night and sing their hearts out after completing the task successfully. Now that Clovis has all the money he wants, the only thing missing is freedom. Therefore, he needs to put the senator in jail to succeed. The senator and his assistant are among the wealthy attendees at an auction that is taking place in the city in the scene that follows. When the auction starts and Clovis's painting is put up for sale, Ricardo and Clovis are both seated in covert positions. Unexpectedly, Roberto, the senator's aide, places the highest offer and purchases the artwork for himself. As auctions don't require sources of funding, we learn that the senator is utilizing the artworks to turn his black money into white money. The moment that happens, Clovis comes forward with a second copy of the painting to show everyone that they are all forgeries. He further says the senator is a liar who deceives people for his gain. Taking advantage of this as the ideal situation, Ricardo gets up from his seat and tries to question the senator, but the senator uses his position of authority to dismiss Ricardo. As a result, the plot is unsuccessful, and Ricardo is forced to take Clovis in. After that, the story jumps ahead 18 months to Clovis' release from prison. He claims that Brazil's legal system is so lax that, despite receiving a 20-year initial sentence, he was released after just 18 months. In the final scene of the film, Lohan greets him outside and they share an emotional reunion. The brother-sister team has finally given up their life of crime, and they have started a food stand with the proceeds. There are many customers here, which suggests that business is booming. The two make a lifelong commitment to one another as the film comes to a close.